Hey guys, this is Chris from DSX Machina, and I'm with... Dave from Rampant Wolf Games. Great, and we are here to do a few more, I'm sure, very pleasant and n non-argumentative or confrontational top five lists. And we... <laughs> not con Well, at least we... Yeah, we we won't do any uh, any any rape jokes this time. I swear to God. Uh, so we are here with uh, the top five. Uh, which one are we doing first? Bottom up, top, top to bottom. Anticipated Kickstarter, I think. Yeah. So top five anticipated Kickstarter Kickstarter games. Now the first rule about this, uh, if I remember correctly, is that we all have to have paid into these. Yes. <laughs> so my five are all ones I paid into. Correct. And I also want to make the point that at this point, these are five that I have not received. That's the definition of the word anticipated. Correct, yes. Because uh, oddly enough, despite the fact that I didn't get anything for about eight, nine months, I got three of them in three weeks. Yeah, same. I got Who Goes There, Mystery of the Temples, and Star yep. Realms just arrived like five minutes ago. I got Who Goes There, uh, Master of the Galaxy, and Now Boarding. Oh, you got, yeah, Now Boarding just came out. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so these are games that probably won't come out for a while. One of them will probably come out this year. The other four will not. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll start with good old-fashioned as he goes first. All right, so I go first. So my, my, my number five, uh, there's a lot going writing on this one because it basically will depend on my confidence with miniature forward gaming from this point forward. Okay. Because I, I call it miniature forward gaming if the game is selling miniatures first and foremost and then the game is an afterthought. I think I already know which one it is. It's not Batman, because I didn't pay into oh, Batman. Like, oh. I, you thought it was Batman. But it could be the other one. It's probably going to be the other one. Okay. Uh, and the other one is the Hellboy board game. That's what I was going to say. Uh, I, I didn't go into Solomon King. I, Solomon King came out just for the point where I looked at my bank statement and went, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? It's, it's really bad if you end up having like your bank account and lump together your things, and if you custom create like a, a Kickstarter one, it, you, you just you close. You don't want to look at it. Oh, that's that's so much smarter. I just I just pay my credit card bill, and realize I can't. I, I'm 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 supposed to be quitting my job. I can't because I had to pay off my Kickstarter debt. So that so yeah. So Solomon Kane just snuck in after that. Like if Solomon came out one month earlier, I would be in debt a bit further. Yes. Even though spiritually it seems to be a similar game. Like the whole thing is yeah. the whole thing. You put down tiles with squares on them. You put your miniatures and then you fight. Yep. Right. I got into Hellboy because it was purely pure, purely cooperative. Yeah. I love the IP. Mm hmm. Uh, I love the artist. Yep. Uh, he seems to be intricately involved. You'd have to. You can't just do a Hellboy comic and not yeah. have. And not have him involved. Uh, so I'm, I'm really interested in how this... It blew up big time. Yes. I would probably think Hellboy... It didn't make as much as Batman. I would put it probably third place this year behind Nemesis yeah. and Batman. Because Batman got to four or five. I think it got to two or three. Yeah. Um, and, and Nemesis destroyed them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's... Yeah, because Hellboy is very miniature forward. I have no idea how it gets played. And I, what's funny is that I, I'm not even a big painter anymore. I used to be. Yeah. I could, I have, like I said, I have a full 40k armies for Nid. I have a 40k army for Tau, and I have a War Machine army for for uh, for um, Signar. And I, I'm a, I, I could probably could could get back into it. Got to buy new brushes and paints and all that. But I have zero interest in painting these things. So I'm, I'm at this point going. I know there's a reason why I paid into it. Luckily, it wasn't expense. I didn't go for the crazy one. Yeah. I well, didn't go for the crazy one. I, minimum entry. See, and that's why I didn't do Star Wars Legion, because we had that talk amongst our friends where it was just like, you know, you can't play Star Wars Legion unless you paint the minis. I'm like, yeah, but... Are, are those people miniatures or spaceship miniatures? People. Yeah, if they're spaceship miniatures, I would totally get into that, because just paint them silver or black, or just paint them black and then dry brush them silver, and like, you're done. Yeah. He's like this. Yeah, I know it's stormtroopers and and, 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 and rebel. If it's stormtroopers, I can do that too. White. Yeah, it's white, white. Actually, I do. I I would do a flat black, white, black wash, polish. No, I could do that. <laughs> that's why I picked Tau, which all have their helmets on, and then I picked Nids, which were creatures. Like I thought, oh, you can be whatever color you want. So that's my number five, Hellboy, the board game. All right. So my number five. I know I already got some uh, flack for backing this one, um, but. 
But it's not a my... game. It's not a game that you've gotten yet, though. No, it's not a one that I've gotten yet. But it's one that the company gets a lot of flack because they put out a lot of product, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad one. Okay. However, so it's a cool menu or not title. That's right. <laughs> Call it. It's, it's Cthulhu Death May Die. Are you back to that? I did. I thought you'd walked away by that no. point. Oh my god. Oh please, I got what level did you play? I mean I'll, I'll admit Hellboy I'll say I'll, I'll admit uh, every pledge uh, level. Okay. I pledged at the minimum hundred dollar, hundred pound, which means it's probably five hundred bucks. Um, the hundred euro it, it's like a hundred euros I yeah. think for Hellboy. So it's like a hundred and seventy five bucks. I, I backed at the level just below the, 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 the life size mini of Cthulhu. Why not get the life size Cthulhu? Because it's, it's not life size by the no, way. Life size is it's, 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 it's like this. It's yeah, it's the size of, of your baby. Exactly. You yeah. actually have a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But yeah, no, what, I know. What just, was the uh, price of that? Do you remember that level? Not off the top of my head, but uh, I remember the Hellboy one was about a hundred hundred euros. Yeah, it was um, it was up there, but of course, you know the thing that always gets me is of course it's U.S. dollars and I back in Canadian dollars. So it's always like oh it's a hundred bucks, and you're like yeah, oh not hey, really. it's not hundred bucks. So one hundred ninety six Canadian. Uh, yeah, but it's hundred only hundred fifty American, so it doesn't hurt as much. But yeah. So that was my number five. What's your number four? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> my number four is a... I should have actually researched these a bit more. <laughs> I should remember. But, okay. This one, it's not anticipated because it made a boatload of money. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some Kickstarters that I'm looking forward to that just squeak... Just, like Morn Quest, yep. which had a failed Kickstarter campaign. The second one succeeded. And it's not on my list. It barely made it. But this one, I am really intrigued. It's called The Faceless. Hmm. Never heard the of fa- it. The Faceless is a Kickstarter where um, it's kind of a, one of those dream, nightmarish ones. Oh. Very kind of, um, very interesting art style. Very kind of large head, gloomy, um, kind of almost like gloom. That dark, kind of mid-century Victorian style. Wait, is this the one that has the, the magnets and stuff? Jackpot. Okay, I have heard of this one. Jackpot. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so the whole idea is that um, as you move your miniatures around, um, there's a magnet, and there are magnets in the miniatures. Yeah. And so you're you're altering the direction of this kind of compass, and yeah. that affects certain things. So as you place your characters around, you're trying to alter the course. Yeah. I think like, like the villain moves in the direction of the compass, so you have to kind of alter mm-hmm. the direction. I am really fascinated with that because yep. I'm kind of reaching my fill on the standard cut and paste cooperative games yep. where it's like this game can be completed quite easily so we're going to add a lot of random modifiers to make the game incredibly hard and then you'll like thank us for it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm getting more and more frustrated and so games like I think Mask of Moai which is like this is there is no random element it's entirely yep. communication the entire randomization is in the prep. Yep. I'm fascinated by that. And the faces with like a really neat idea. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah. But the art style looked amazing. It was not an expensive Kickstarter. No. But I would really like these strange alternative cooperative games to succeed. So that's that's my number four, the faceless. Reminds me of the one that I was hoping was gonna make it, and it's good because you can cut it open if you want. Is it was called Gravity. And it was worth was that the one with the pedestal? No, it was the oh. one where it's got the board. Where so you got a top board, two sideboards, and a bottom board, and basically it's capture the flag, team deathmatch type kind of thing. But the miniatures are magnetized, and so you can be on the roof shooting at someone. I actually know a few people that are designing games that are three dimensional like that. Yeah, yeah. So it had disappeared. They canceled it, and it never came back. Really? Yeah. And I don't know why, because there's lots of interest, but then they canceled it. So maybe there is an IP infringement. I don't know. Well, I heard that's what happened with um... the one you sent me. What was it called? Uh... Not not the not the not the not the famous one. There was a smaller one. Oh, there was a Doctor Horrible sing along blog. That was the one where oh. he ran the campaign and then admitted later he didn't actually have the IP. Oh, that was there was another one. Uh, Hero Hero Quest. Somebody did a Hero Quest? Yeah, somebody did a, her- a 30th anniversary Hero Quest. Yeah, and just the name Hero Quest is an illegal nightmare. Yeah, exactly, and that's what it was. It was a Spanish company. They said they had the IP copyright stuff. And for what the, the Sierra game or the board game? Un- un- the unrelated, board game, the unrelated board game. Yeah, yeah. All right, 
My number four is Vast Mysterious Manor. I got into the Spock thing. Yeah. Okay. So I backed this one because, you know, Vast is good, but I wanted to get the extras. <laughs> By the way, you said that Vast is a franchise. Because, like, I like the Vast and Mysterious. I like the Vast, I like the Mysterious, and they put it together. It is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, Vast was good, it, the Crystal Cavern, um, but. There was a lot of extra stuff that you could have got in the original Kickstarter that you didn't get. Couldn't get retail, which just annoys me. Mm-hmm. Kickstarter exclusives. Yeah. Um, so you could get them now in this campaign, as well as a different take. So now it's a predefined board maximum exploration, not like the cavern, which can just be massive and there's no actual true shape to it. The manor has got a predefined, like I think it's ten by ten, that it can ma- that you can exploring but the tiles can all always change so it's like crystal cavern but with some boundaries so i was like hmm, could be interesting so hopefully that's why it's at number four it's not most anticipated but it's anticipated it's pretty high on the list still it is once it wants to do that on that one i can't recall but i think it's is big Mm, spring of next year, I think. I'm pretty sure. I think the face this is might be eyeballing for late, late this year. Yeah, I think it is supposedly March. Yeah, March of next year. Okay. All right. So number three. Uh. <clears throat> This one could almost be on like an overhyped list just because of so much attention yeah. this game's gotten. Um, it's Dinosaur Island. Oh, okay. Is that the one that had like the. The big dual sword edition and so forth? Uh, I heard about this game obviously about a year ago. Oh, it's... No, I'm thinking Fireball Island, sorry. What's it? Fireball Island. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, about. God, no, I wouldn't put Fireball Island. That game can burn in, frickin a, in a fire for all eternity. I have no interest in Fireball Island. I am not five years old. <laughs> nope. No interest in that whatsoever. Nope, not Fireball Island. That one has a lot of hype. That yeah. one has a lot of hype. Um, I'm talking about like nerd hype, not just general hype. Mm-hmm. Fireball Island, okay. Fireball Island, you're gonna find for sale in Target in six months. So there's no, I don't know, there was no point in backing that game. You're gonna find it at, you know, in, in, yeah. in Target in six months. Well, we won't. There, there's no Targets in Canada anymore. Yeah, we don't care. We'll find it online. Mm-hmm. Um, but the point was, like Dinosaur Island, everyone talked about how this was this was Jurassic Park the game. Mm-hmm. Despite the, there is a Jurassic Park the game now. Well, wow. but this was. The game, the Jurassic Park game you wanted. Yeah, it was in a very cool little artistic style, very psychedelic. Yeah, it was complicated. It was fun. It had a lot of uh, options to it. Um, and then some suppliers got them in Canada, but good luck trying to get them. They were nearly impossible to find, and then they ran out. So instead of doing a second print run, they do a second Kickstarter because that's what you do today. Uh, so they went and. Did it and they offered the dual sword. I almost didn't back them. I almost didn't back them. There's a part of me just like I'm gonna wait and I'll, I'll be able to buy it for probably the same price, if not cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but I got it because I wanted the dual sword expansion and get a few. They had a few cool exclusives. Mm-hmm. That's what I got. It was it was the exclusives. That was the only thing. Yeah. If it was like this is the retail edition, wink wink, then I wouldn't. That's why I didn't back Eclipse. Yep. Look, no point. Uh, it looks cool. I really. Look, I mean, Nicole, my fiance, is going to play that game to death mm-hmm. if there's a solitaire mode I will not see her again <laughs> she's going to lock herself in the bedroom and just play it she's going to be like I'm going to walk <laughs> over she's going to be sitting in a, in a bedroom smelling of stink right yeah. unshaven <laughs> she's going to look like a Wookiee <laughs> and I'm like well she's French yeah um, and I'm like what happened I'm playing do I'm playing do this her again you want like, no please for love of God honey <clears throat> mouthwash <laughs> I'm gonna hose you down because <laughs> you, you're because you're literally glued to the bed. But so that's my number three, Dinosaur Island. All right. So my number three is. I love my fiance, by the way. <laughs> dearly, dearly, I love her. So my number three is. Uh, it's kind of an interesting game because they've already got ten seasons of this game planned out, and they've already delivered the first season, and then each season is going to be a new Kickstarter, and that's. Dice Throne Season oh, 2. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, I almost said tip my tongue. Okay. Yeah. 
I, I, I was close to getting this one. Yeah. Yep. It is... It, for whatever reason, it's quick to teach. Uh, everyone seems to enjoy it. It's basically... I don't want to say it's magic, but it's it's basic it's magic. No, no, like the magic. <laughs> I want to do that. Dun, 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 dun. No, um, it's uh, I think magic. <laughs> so go on. Everybody gets it. Eric picks it up quick, and it's got that. Oh, it's that Paris. Paris don't get it. Yeah, sorry. No, actually, they did. But uh, it's got it's got that Yahtzee feel to it. So it's roll the dice. Try and get the combinations roll again. Try and get the combination roll again. And that's what you're stuck with. So, and then you try and use that to inflict harm on other people or heal yourself. And that's that's basically the game. Then, why is it a TV show with multiple seasons? I think. Well, no, it's not a TV show. It's just it's Kickstarter. I know, but what's the what's the, the, mul- the multiple seasons? What's the second the- season going to offer you? More more playable characters. There's reason we don't know. Like microtransactions to me. It could be. It very much could be. But they keep telling us there's going to be some new elements, and they've got stuff planned out. But of course, we've all heard that before. Very much so. So that was my number three. Yeah. So my the dreck of my list is over. Like I said, I had like okay, I'll throw in Hellboy instead of this and Faceless instead of like I had a couple it was hard like the three were hard ones because I had stuff like the Gia re-release mm-hmm. is on mm-hmm. my list uh, there's one called Pandorum which I wish was related to the movie but not <laughs> um, and a whole bunch of other ones but the bottom two were locked in stone so my number two is one that I literally backed at like 24 hours before the end <laughs> like I backed Nemesis and that was a lot of money right and I was moving into this one. I'm like, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to. But there's a part of me that really wanted it because it looked batshit crazy. Okay. And that was Planet Apocalypse. Hmm. Okay, I don't remember seeing that one. Okay. First of all, it's done by P- um, Sandy Peterson. Oh, okay. Yeah. He yeah. did Cthulhu. Cthulhu Wars. Cthulhu Wars. Yeah. Now our local game store has Cthulhu Wars. Have you seen the box of Cthulhu Wars? Yeah. It dwarfs School Maven. I know. I've played Cthulhu Wars. Is it good? Uh, not for what it, you pay for it. Okay. So if you pay, if you if it was a free game, it'd be amazing. But you yes. pay two hundred some dollars, so it's not. No. It's basically Risk with Cthulhu. So no interest in that. Yeah. Competitive though. Yes. So uh, Planet Apocalypse is cooperative, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the map for co- I, I really know for a fact the game is not going to look this big. Like the boards are gigantic. I mean, there's like he just puts out these big pieces of thick plastic card. Yeah. That are six feet across mm-hmm. with these giant miniatures, and I'm like, there's no way. I mean, the game has to. You have to be able to transport this. Like, mm-hmm. how are you going to ship this thing except in a in a coffin? Mm-hmm. Boy, that's a that's a thing you should do. First, to transport your games. Exactly. Yes. Ass Man Funeral now distributing. Well, Snakes and Lattes, which is a restaurant, did yeah. the distribution for. Uh... But anyway, so. By the way, those of you not from Prince George, that is actually the name of Funeral Home, Ass Man's Funeral. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I said that because I could say Ass Man without. Yes. Yeah. Which is weird, too, because of the whole David Letterman thing when he found that place called Ass Man Gas. Apparently, Canadians have no problem naming things Ass no. Man. No. And absolutely. it's a legal name, so we can say it yep. without any form of problems or bleeping. Ass man. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Planet Apocalypse. Planet Apocalypse? Planet Apocalypse. Planet Apocalypse has one thing going for it, which is I have, I still don't know how it plays. I, I got an idea how it played. I watched it play through. It's like, okay, this is going to do some work. So yep. some dice, some movement. Um, there's a guy named Keith Thompson. Mm-hmm. He's an artist. I actually knew the guy for a short time short time when i was developing amethyst i was contacting artists keith was keith was one of the number one people that i wanted to go for Mm -hmm. uh he is extremely talented his art style is incredibly unique Mm -hmm. Uh, but he priced himself out he was everyone has an industry standard like Mm -hmm. literally every artist i contacted to had the exact same rates yeah except keith that was double so I just couldn't justify it. I, my friends and, my, and the people who were helping me fund my game, they were still willing to pony up the dollars. I was like, I can't risk it. I can literally, I can literally get four pieces of extra artwork for the same price as this guy's one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's done work. He's done work on some games. 
He's done work on some, on some movies. There's actually a movie where he did the monster, and it's probably one of the coolest, most original-looking monsters that's been put to film in the last five to ten years. I can't name the movie right now, but maybe I'll just flash it on the screen for you guys later. I'll just do it right here. And then you can, it'll look like, like magic, even though I'm not, I'm not really good with post-editing. Um, he's an astounding artist. He's an astounding artist. He wanted to work with me because he loved my property, but... I couldn't afford him. Yeah. He even I was like, I'll drop the I'll drop the, the rates down. He said, I was like, that's awesome. You're still way too much. Uh, but his art style is fantastic. Go look at. He designed all the monsters, which means I know where the vast majority of this budget this game went to was paying for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got. It wasn't even a. a, a it didn't explode like some of the games on the list. It was like five hundred, six hundred thousand, which is really good. Yeah. But compared to the other games we talked about on this list, uh, with the exception of Faceless, Hellboy, Dinosaur Island, uh, all got past or all got close to a million, or if not surpassed it. Uh, this game was, it was half a million, but I'm actually more excited of this because now that I've looked at all these other games that I've backed, yeah. that's the one that seems to me the most batshit crazy, mm-hmm. but the freakiest miniatures I've seen. It's like so many miniatures like, oh, standard sword guy, but this sword guy has a nice hat. And I go, yeah, but the creatures in, in Planet of Pot, I'm thinking five years from now, people are going to look back on, you're going to look at a display of all your miniatures and someone's going to point at those and go, what in the hell are these things? Yeah. I go, that's Planet Apocalypse. The game can can suck, yep. but those miniatures look pretty cool. So that's my number two, Planet Apocalypse. Cool. So my number two. I know you're gonna get, you're gonna do the face, but you boot. So the submarine simulation game. Oh, I know, I know you boot. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I didn't back it. Yep. I was tempted for the length of time that data from Star Trek Next Generation gets tempted. 0. 0.05 seconds. For an Android, <laughs> that is an eternity. But for me, it wasn't an eternity. I was like, hmm, I saw a playthrough. And I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah, I'll teach them. Uh, I think in your circle, I can understand that. Yes. And I will definitely play this game with you. Yes. But in my circle, that game would not sell. No. But in I your can see circle, that, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because you're also you're a crowd that plays sonar. We, my group wouldn't play sonar. Your group plays sonar. You boot absolutely. I would totally be on board playing you boot with you. Yeah, but see, my group also plays legendary encounters, and your group does. I want to play legendary. Encounters. I know. I want to play legendary. I know. Encounters. Call me up. You know what I want to. So yeah, no, I I I'll, I can support it. I didn't, <laughs> but enough. I can understand why you did. <laughs> now knowing your game group. All right. So rock paper scissors for number one. Did you, you did it too? That was my number two. That was uh, yeah. you boot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. So I. So you get to go first. Sweet, because I'm guessing this may be your number one as well. But we've already mentioned it once. So Nemesis. And I'm excited for it, but I keep hearing little things popping up on the periphery about, oh, this company has some issues. I'm like, I, 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 I don't want to hear this at this point in time. I, I, I've already given them my money. I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. It's just, I, I, you know. And I have emailed the company to ask them about a different game they produce, and I got zero response back. And I'm just like, or well, they're Polish. Yeah, not sure why that matters, but they're Polish. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. I mean, when during the campaign they did some videos. I mean, it looks like they've got a pretty large production studio, which. And this is not their first rodeo. It's not their first rodeo, so I'm hopeful that it delivers. But there's always just that, just that, just that little bit niggling in the back of the mind. Like, oh, well, you expressed the fact that the company Awaken Realms. This is I'm still confused by the how the whole thing works, because Awaken Realms is responsible for this war of mine. Correct. Except that the name Awaken Realms isn't on this war of mine. It's very confusing. If you look at their credits, they yep. made the game. Yep. But that brand is not on the product. Yeah, and then they also did what? Did they did Lords of Hellas. They did Lords of Hellas. Now is Awaken Realms name on that one? I don't know, but I know that one has turned into a nightmare. A lot of people got it. I mean, people I know who have gotten Hellas and yeah. say it's a good game. Yes, but then there is the no. I mean, it's always, of course, Greek, squeaky wheel gets the grease type kind of thing. I mean, there's just a lot of very vocal people who haven't got it, or there's been damaged product and yeah. stuff. Mm. So, yeah. But I think if you actually look at their website, Awaken Realms website, mm-hmm. oddly enough, they don't mention any of their games. They just sell mm-hmm. all their miniatures that they that they that they do for 40k and fantasy. Yeah, good stuff though. Oh yeah, oh my god, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Their design. One thing about these guys is that it's like, oh, can they do can they do miniatures? Yes, they yes. can do miniatures. Yes. 
Absolutely. So that that's my number one. So I'm excited but apprehensive. Uh, so my number one is not Nemesis. <gasps> Excellent. I lied. It's Nemesis. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, it's. I mentioned it already. I mentioned that it's. I think it's so far the biggest Kickstarter. Uh, I think Kickstarter campaigns when they start in the holiday season, even the, if it's after Christmas, they seem to do well. Mm-hmm. I think they came out at a good time. They had a good campaign. It made a ton of money. Mm-hmm. They had they 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 despite quality of the game, they ran a perfect campaign. Yes, they had answers for everything. Yep. they were constantly updating. Yep, they had a clean system. They had and the they rules. listened. They listened to a lot of people. They had unlockable after unlockable, even the effing cats. Yeah. Right, you couldn't help it. In fact, I was, when I was when I, I backed it at the at a higher level, went into the pledge manager and was like click 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 click, and then I looked at the price and went, "What am I doing? <laughs> I don't need to get these things pre-painted." Unclick, unclick, unclick. Just hit send. I got the friggin' cats. I'm okay because if I get these, they'll get they'll get the cats. The code will kill me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh my god, no, I do not need the cats. <laughs> no, I do need the cats. So, yeah, so Nemesis, yeah. And you're right, I am a little worried as well because this War of Mine is not, a, it, right off the bat, Nemesis, um, this War of Mine is not a good game. Uh, and the reasons why it's not a good game it will take too long to go into details. Maybe when I do a review of this War of Mine, maybe with your input, yep. um, we'll talk about where that game failed. And funnily enough, it failed because they wanted to make th- they wanted to make the board game that the video game failed to be. Correct. Which is a strange thing to say. They wanted yeah. to make, make a game where the experience was losing. Yeah. Um, it, it's a game where you should expect to lose, and that should itself should be a rewarding experience, which yeah. is something that the video game failed to convey, because the video game can be cheesed, it can be yep. played, played as a game, so you can succeed at the game. Yeah. I have never, lo- I've lost, I've played, I have 50 hours into this war of mine. And I've lost like twice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Nemesis. I'm. I'm. But they're been pretty open. They posted the rules. They've modified and amended the rules based on input. Yep. Uh, I'd be interesting to know how the semi-cooperative mode. I don't think we'll ever play that. I think our mm-hmm. group will be fully cooperative. Yeah. Um, I imagine there's a decent possibility we may end up homebrewing. I like the concept. Yes. I think it's about damn time we had a game of that scope. Yes. I was mentioning the fact that one of my favorite films of all time is Alien. I just mentioned a film called Pandorum, which if you, if you haven't seen it, watch Pandorum. It's one of the most underappreciated space sci-fi horror yeah. films of the last 20 years. Like, really. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm... That one, if that one fails, like if that one disappoints, because mm-hmm. that one's going to have probably the latest delivery of all of these. I don't know yeah. if Apocalypse and Nemesis are both bound to... Actually, that's not true. I think Nemesis might actually deliver this year. Like the first box, the base box. I you, did, I did all together. So I did, I did split, I did split shipment. So I will get Nemesis. I think this November, which means uh, July. Um, yeah. But then the all together cap come. They're all the rest of the expansions show up in February. So next yeah. December. But yeah. So if that happens, then Nemesis and Planet Apocalypse will be out around the same time. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's Nemesis. I really, really hope it's good. Yep. Because if it fails, I might be discouraged with a lot of Kickstarters going in the future. Some people yeah. get discouraged with Kickstarter because of the way the campaigns go. And for me, it's a delivered product. I actually really, really like, even despite the misgivings of who goes there, uh, I still like the, the their effort they made into the game. Mm-hmm. I, I find it interesting that all these guys know how to make a great game. It just seems like these guys need help making the rules. Almost yep. every one of these guys is like, you guys need someone like, no, we can do a board game because we have a graphic designer. Yeah. And we have uh, production facilities. We have a 3D modeler. We could totally make this work. And I go, uh, who's making the game? Yeah. Like, no, no, we'll, we'll make the game. It's like whenever, like, a game, like, video games, they're like, oh, we have programmers and we have art designers. Like, who's your writer? Oh, no, the, the, uh, the guy who, who's the programmer, he, he'll write. I go, well, he, doesn't know how, he doesn't know how to make a complete sentence. What's wrong with you? Yeah. A lot of people take advantage of writers. And a lot of these guys, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that Awakened Realms should know what they're doing when it comes to writing. This War of Mine has a book of a thousand entries. There's a lot of detail, and the writing's pretty solid. But I'm talking about making a balanced game mechanic. Like, who goes there, once again, as we mentioned, three hours plus game with, a, with, a, with player el- elimination. 
Why if you get killed off in the first hour? It's like, oh, why don't you go watch a movie or sit in the sidelines? Yeah. It's like, why couldn't you do a um, um, Dead of Winter thing where you're just like, oh, oh, Johnny Five shows up. Yeah. I'm not sure why he's Johnny Five, but the yeah. idea of the fact that one guy moves out, another guy moves in, you have eight, eight miniature cards. Yeah. If you have the expansion, well, oh, this guy's dead. This guy, because the facility had thirty people in the in the in the short story. I've read the Joseph W. Candle story, yeah. so I know how that is. You can easily just swap. Wait, now you're this guy, yeah, and just keep on playing. Yeah, yeah. There are ways to make that work. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so that's my top five anticipated Kickstarter games. Number five, Hellboy, the board game. Four, Faceless. Three, Dinosaur Island. Two, Planet Apocalypse, and one, Nemesis. And my number five was uh, Cthulhu May Die. Four was Fast Mysterious Manor. Manor. <laughs> uh, three was Dice Throne Season Two. Uh, number two was U Boot, and number one was U Boot Nemesis. Yes. All right. So U Boot. So I am Chris. I'm Dave, and we will catch you next time.